Hello everyone and welcome to learning how to cook Louisiana Creole with a tropical twist. This is your host Larry Fenelier and in the kitchen tonight is Cynthia K. Seymour in Miami, Florida. How Hi Cynthia. You? I'm fine. I'm fine. And in the peanut gallery tonight we have George Sepich. Hey George. Howdy. Next to him, Jason Joseph. New York photographer, hey Jays. Uh, next to me is Linda D, also from New York. Hello. And we have a special guest all the way from Thailand, Matura Chapman. Hello. Chopman. Hi, Matura. Okay, so tonight, my dear Cynthia, yeah. what are we? What are we cooking? We're gonna do a Cajun barbecue shrimp. And it's a little bit different from how you imagine barbecue. It's not sticky or sweet. This is a Louisiana-style um, recipe, and my grandmothers both made it. So it was something that we grew up with as children. And I thought that I would do a little, t you know, twist on it uh -huh. and uh, modernize it a little bit. So I'm here to cook that with you tonight. Oh, fantastic. And okay, I'll good. Okay, on the side I'm going to have a butternut squash quinoa, which is sort of an update instead of we would normally have rice or something. Mm -hmm. We eat a lot of rice in Louisiana. Right. And for our salad, we're going to have a tomato mango salad. Fantastic. And um, just to remind the folks out there, uh, Cynthia is part of the Healthy Eating Detox Program Circle and the other circle that I sent out. Also, Matura is part of that. Um, Linda is part of the, that circle. Jason, are you part of that detox? Are you not detoxing this? this he's eating this pizza. Term? Yeah, he's eating pizza, so he's not part of the detox um, program. Yeah, I'm toxin. <laughs> and George, I'm retoxing. George is also part of that, uh, e even though he... Um, oh, George, I think you prepared the dish, didn't you? I, I, I did. I, I did a little variation of it. It was. It's. Uh, I, I'm munching on it a little bit now. Um, it, it's... Uh, Let's okay, don't, don't don't show us yet. Don't show okay, us yet. All right, because, all right. uh, <laughs> I was hoping I was hoping to show you now so I could start digging in. All right, okay, all right. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's let's see. No, it. no, let's <laughs> oh, let him eat it. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Linda, if he starts eating it now, by the end of the show there'll be nothing left. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. I'll wait, I'll wait. All right. So Cynthia. Okay, so we start off with a pound of, of shrimp per person. And make sure you wash it. I get the peeled and deveined already, so I don't have to do that. It's extra work. And I wash it really, really well, and then salt it with Lowry seasoning salt, um, which, you know, you could use salt and pepper if you want to do that. And then we start with a sauce, and I'm going to make it here in this saucepan. This is a baked dish, so I'm going to take... I'm going to take a little bit less butter than the recipe calls for. I'm going to put mm -hmm. it into the <coughs> saute pan mm -hmm. and turn the heat on about medium. And then I'm going to, I've got, I've substituted the light olive oil instead just to kind of lighten up the sauce a little bit. Okay. So I've added a little bit more olive oil. But I like the way that the butter kind of emulsifies into it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to actually switch sides here. Okay. And so I get those mixed up fairly well mm -hmm. in the pan or in the saute pot. So essentially this, you're making the sauce to pour over the, um, the shrimp. Yeah, we're going to make a sauce, we're going to pour it over the shrimp, and then we're going to bake that shrimp for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the size of the shrimp. And uh -huh. the reason why that's important is small shrimp obviously take long, I mean, less time to cook than a larger shrimp. These are, pro I think these are like 1820s or something like that. Okay. 1820 <laughs> count. Right? Yeah, 1820 count. And what that mm -hmm. means is 1820 count means that they're 18 to 20 found, uh, in a pound is right. how that measures out. So an 1820 is going to be larger than a 
40 to 50, which would mean 40 to 50 shrimp in that pound. So it's which you know, means that that would be a smaller smaller size shrimp. Much smaller size yeah. shrimp. So that would take a, a lot less time to cook. So you've got to kind of vary the the recipe according to the size of the shrimp. So then I'm going to take some. Uh, I've already put the olive oil in there. I kind of had the pot seasoned with that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. <clears throat> okay. When, when I was younger, I used to call that, what's this here sauce? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't pronounce Worcestershire. <laughs> it is hard. I, I, I still have trouble with that today. What's this here sauce? <laughs> what's this here sauce? Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> what's this here sauce? <laughs> Uh, and then um, we have this kind of belief that the more pepper, the better in this recipe. It's it's a super messy recipe, so I literally just start grinding away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's one of those recipes that in Louisiana, what we do is we serve it on a picnic table and we put newspaper all over the picnic table. Ah, and then you know, have a lot of napkins, and we eat these with our fingers. <laughs> so it's, you're, it's, it's, it's literally finger licking, so all the stuff gets all over your fingers, and it's just part of the culture, that's how we roll down there. I, I don't know if we can say that, we don't want any trouble from Colonel Sanders there, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I put a bit of uh, pepper in there. That's a lot of pepper, not a bit. <laughs> I know. I was, I was, I was scared off. I used, I used half the pepper because I couldn't believe it was two tablespoons of pepper. It's like, yeah, wow. it is actually. It's um, like, a, it's like a, uh, next time I'll do it with the two. I only use the one. Part of the reason why we use so much is because I cook these with the shells on, and you can cook them with the shells on or off, but the shells add flavor. And so what happens is the pepper gets caught up in the shell. So you don't end up getting so much, much of the pepper, if that makes any sense. So we have a tendency to use more just because we're cooking it in the shell. Cool. Uh, let me ask you: Can you use like a, a pepper, another type of pepper, like uh, like Scotch bonnet or, or or habaneros in 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 the sauce? You know, mince it up fine. I, I think mm. I think absolutely. But the thing mm. is, is that you're going to want to reduce down the amount of. Of right. On it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just because of the the power of it, black pepper is really not such a powerful spice. Right. Mm -hmm. So I just put a, a teaspoon of the rosemary in it, and I'm letting it heat up along the way. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to take some uh, lemon, and I'm going to squeeze those lemons in straight into the. <clears throat> These what, don't have a whole lot of seeds, otherwise I'd be straining those out. What, what would you think? I, I, when I was making it, I had the idea of maybe adding a, a tablespoon of black pepper and a tablespoon of white pepper for yeah. a little extra heat. Do you think that'd be okay? Yeah, you could do that. White pepper is great. Yeah, I love white pepper. Um, so I'm going to put a couple of lemon squeezes in there. So it's actually, actually it's juice of two lemons then. Juice of two lemons. Okay. And then I'm going to put a tablespoon of ponzu sauce, which is kind ah. of like a lemon soy sauce or something. It's a mm -hmm. it's an Asian uh, yeah. sauce. Right. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't have the ponzu sauce ponzu sauce, so I just used a regular soy sauce, but it seemed to work well. Yeah, that that works just as fine. So I'm going to use a little bit of that in here. And the soy sauce is perfect for it. It just gives it that that edge. Yeah. Right. Then, let's see. I'm going to use some Tabasco. Ah, you're really putting in some heat in that thing. Yeah. Actually, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off a little bit unless you want or unless you're okay. Whatever you do. Okay. Mm. Uh -huh. I, I I used the full amount that you called for. I wanted it. Yeah, yeah. I like I like a full um 
teaspoon. And then this, this seasoning salt I just went ahead and put into all over the shrimp and kind of uh, mixed it all together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And then I've got two cloves of garlic that I'm going to put into it that have already been kind of minced up. I gotta admit, I, I didn't have the fresh garlic cloves. I had a bottle of minced garlic, and I just uh, put put a, uh, um, a cheated and put some of that in. But it seemed to be okay. That's fine. Um, yeah. A lot of people do that. I, for whatever reason, um, I'm not a fan of the flavor of um, already prepared garlic, and I don't right. know why. Well, I, I know Larry always says fresh is best, so I, I fresh is that. best. Fresh is best. <coughs> And I'm a little bit, like, I'll have lemon juice in my refrigerator, but I rarely use it um, because I'd rather just use real lemons. So I'm going to take yeah. this sauce, and I'm going to pour it all over the top of uh, the shrimp like that. And I'm going to try to get the shrimp. I'm going to put... <clears throat> I'm going to turn the heat up on the quinoa so we can get that going. What's... <laughs> Watch the heat on the empty pot. Okay, turned it off. Yeah, cool. you're right. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to get the shrimp all, you know, just about covered. You know, flattened mm -hmm. down and covered. And then I'm going to stick those in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes <clears throat> at 425. All right. You're making me so hungry. I don't know what kind of screenshot we'll have later because I'm definitely going <laughs> to... <laughs> so I'm going to take this and put this away. Maybe an empty plate by the time we get to it. <laughs> um, Matura, since this is your first hangout, what you can do, um, since the mic is on the other laptop, uh, you might want to just blue box the frame which she's standing in front of the stove. And by blue box, and I mean just clicking moving your mouse and clicking that frame one time so it will pop up as the main image on your screen. Just just a little tip. Yeah, this is a first uh, hangout. Cool. Okay, so Cynthia. So right now I'm going to move to the quinoa. Mm -hmm. And this, I cook quinoa a lot lately because I'm trying to move away from the rice. So what I do is I make sure that I rinse it really well before I make it. Um, it's got a bitter coating on the seed. If you don't rinse it, it can sometimes flavor your uh, your uh, quinoa in, in, in a little bit of a bitter way. And, and a lot of people now are using quinoa in their meals. They're substituting that yeah. in place of rice. I had quinoa in place of a steak the other day. Yeah. In place of a steak. <laughs> Jason, keep, keep Times are tough. <laughs> is, is, is it true quinoa killed your entire family? What did you, what did you have in place of the rice? Me? More quinoa. Oh, okay. More quinoa. So, so you, had, you had quinoa and quinoa. With a side of quinoa. In a, a side quinoa, of quinoa. Cream quinoa sauce. <laughs> well, that's very uh, healthy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, so there. <laughs> okay, so I've got right here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, yeah. a, it's diced up, um, what do you call it, uh, butternut squash. Oh, and lovely. So I throw that on top of the quinoa and cook it at the same time. So I've got to bring right. this back up to a boil. <clears throat> So you see, Jason, you could have used butternut squash. So you could have butternut squash, quinoa, quinoa, and quinoa. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to put the top on it. When it comes to a boil, I'm going to um, turn it down to low. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to let it cook for the next, like, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. And that's that's long enough to cook the squash as well, huh? Long enough to cook the squash as well. Nice. Yeah. what I do is I mix it all together. So it's got a little bit of an added flavor to it. Yeah, as 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 um folks, a, a tip here. Um when you're putting anything on the stove to, to cook fast, uh you could always cover it. Once you cover it, it will cook super fast. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it is covered right now, and I Go always ahead. I do that. And I found that when I cover it and then turn it way down to low, it doesn't get sticky or, you know, even with rice and things like that, too. Yep, yep. <laughs> not, not everybody could boil rice. I know it's it's just mm -hmm. little techniques. Yeah, just I'll ask my out. just ask my ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she not cook it? No, I I thought how to how to boil rice. Oh, that was. But that, that's that's a story for another day. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the timer on for 15 minutes, and uh -huh. I'm gonna work on this uh, vinaigrette dressing. Okay, cool. I love vinaigrette dressings. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with some garlic. And I use a little micro planer. Okay. So, so that's one clove of garlic? or One clove of garlic. And it depends on the size of the clove. I mean, sometimes if they're too small ones, I'll use two. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're saying size matters then? In this case, in terms of garlic, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, maybe I like it. <laughs> uh, on this show, Once folks. It come to a rolling boil. This this uh, quinoa. I'm going to turn it uh -huh. down low. All right. And let it sit here. <clears throat> okay. Um, while, while while you have any any other uh, ingredients to add to. Yeah, you have some olive oil to add yes, to that. Yes, I've got yeah. some light olive oil that I'm using here. Okay. And I'm going to use about six tablespoons for that. Two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use four tablespoons of the red wine vinegar. Awesome. Yeah, that's an awesome sauce. <laughs> One, two. If anyone has questions, they can feel free to comment on the event post that Larry posted, and we'll be sure to read them out. Yeah, J Jason is handling that part of the um, part of the show here. Uh, oh, absolutely. <clears throat> and I think today was the first time I used events, and uh, it, it was pretty good. It was not bad. Yeah, I love that idea. And you know what, Larry? I was able to um, take the link and the picture mm -hmm. and do it, put it on Facebook and Twitter. So I just took the URL cool. the mm -hmm. and shared cool, it. Nice. Nice. Okay, so I'm squeezing two lemons into this uh, vinaigrette. And it's a fairly um it's a fairly strong vinaigrette because you've got those mangoes. So you want something that's gonna stand up against the mangoes. Oh you you you're yes right, you have mangoes on the side. Uh, yeah. when you, when, for the for the, for the shrimp, yeah. Because Folks, she did this dish l last week, didn't you? And um, yeah, and we took some photos, and that's the photo that's in the um, in the event. And it looked really good. It looked really good. Mm -hmm. And what's that you're adding there? I'm adding a little bit of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. And what that does, and some and some pepper, and then a little bit of salt. What that does is it's going to pull all these ingredients together into a nice vinaigrette. Okay. And sometimes I'll switch it around a little bit. Like if I've got some nice oranges, I'll use oranges instead of the lemons. If I've got something that's, you know, Citrusy. like. Citrusy. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, if I've got key limes, I'll make um, vinaigrettes with key limes sometimes. <clears throat> and, and I'm just going to add some salt. You're, okay. you're, you're, you're a big fan of that seasoned salt, aren't you? I love it. It's it, We cook it with it all the time, and yeah. I just 
I'll use either that or I'll use sea salt, but I like the I like the flavor of the of Lowry's. Yeah, that's good. good is stuff. is uh is Lowry sponsoring this segment of the show? <laughs> they should be. I'm telling you, I, it's just about in everything that I cook with. Let me wash my hands. <laughs> this segment uh, is brought to you by Laurie's Seasoning Salt. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. and I use. I do use a lot of you know things like that. What what what, what was what was that, Larry? Laurie Seasoning Salt. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the, Lowry's? That, all right. Yeah. Okay. Now we now we got the prerequisite uh, seven seven product placements in. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So now we just have a little bit of time to to do the interview right. with Jason. Uh, uh, well, we, we'll um, there's some shows coming up, okay. uh, folks. Uh, right this week uh, on Friday. Well, actually, before Friday, there's a show coming up. Jason just dropped out, but he has a show coming up on on Thursday, tomorrow, um, with uh, dealing with Pinterest. Uh, nice. He probably he'll come back and he'll tell us more about it. But George, tell us about Friday. What's happening Friday? Oh, we got a big show on Friday. Uh, uh, Friday at uh, 6 uh, p.m. Eastern Time, we have the Pirates Pub, and uh, yours truly here, George Seppage, along with uh, our uh, master chef on board, uh, Larry Formelier, uh, and, and Richard Wooding, and the rest of our crew. Actually, Richard isn't going to be there this week. Um, uh, he's taking shore leave, but uh, we got a big show, a uh, pirate uh Grog, um, lots of beverages going on. We'll be talking about food, uh, grub, and uh, all sorts of fun. Hopefully, we'll have some special musical guests. Still have to line those up, but it's Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it. Um, we've, we've been doing this every week. Uh, this week will be our third week, and uh, we get kind of crazy uh, with uh, all sorts of uh, pirate fun and food and drink, and uh, it's a good time. So make sure you. Uh, Check out the hangoutnetworks.com and Larry's uh, Larry's page and, and and our pirate pub page and pirates pi the pirates.pub.com all that so but that yeah thanks for uh, uh, let me share about that so that's awesome no problem Jason uh, yes, thanks, you have something coming up tomorrow show tell us tell no. us what you, no okay um, do I no um, I believe next Thursday. Oh, no, next Thursday. Okay. Again, yeah, uh, uh, probably another episode of the Playful Side of Pinterest with Calibra Kelby. Um, if you're not following Calibra yet and you're into Pinterest, follow her. Um, leave me alone. And, um, <laughs> and we'll let you know what's going on for next Thursday. Okay, good, good. So, folks, there you have it. Uh, Jason's show is not this Thursday, but next Thursday. Uh, he, he's Mr. Pinterest. <laughs> George is... Uh, the pirate, Hi. the pirate guy. <laughs> Great the show, pirate, the, the, the pirate's pub. Yeah. Um, also, that Pinterest show, Jason. Um, mm. I watched it. Uh, I watched the debut, and it was uh, very, very interesting. I, 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 I learned something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just started. I just started Pinteresting, and Jason uh, was responsible. Oh, Linda is responsible for. For getting me on Pinterest, but Jason has been responsible for so, 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 light, so, light, so, lighting a fire under me. So, so Larry, you're saying we won't be bored with his Pinterest board talk, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. It's a all very, right, cool. it's a very interesting show. It's a very interesting show. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, it's a good time. I'm gonna, so, I'm gonna tell you that that one of the requirements of this recipe, uh -huh. is you have a lot of French bread to sop up the sauce with. <laughs> ah, so that's, that's the French bread that you have there. Here's the French bread, and I've just cut it, and I've put a little piece of garlic on the inside, like a little slice of garlic on the inside, and I'm going to toss it in the oven next to the cooking shrimp. <clears throat> okay. So um, we have it. How is that rice? How is that quinoa? Not the rice, sorry. The quinoa. quinoa is coming along. We've got another five minutes probably on that. And okay. The salad dressing is ready. And then what I do, just to talk about the salad, let me see if I can show you all. Yeah. I just get some, some tomatoes and then I cut the, um, the mango and then layer it on top of lettuce. And oh, that looks pretty. One thing I do is 
I typically don't use a super ripe mango for these mm -hmm. because it's it's too sweet for a salad. So this is one that would be too ripe. Mm -hmm. This is one that will probably be just right. And so okay. it's got to be somewhat soft to the touch but slightly still green. Yeah, a little firm, a little firm to the touch. Yeah, yeah. what you don't want is you don't want um, real super sweet kind of cloying on the salad. Yeah. You want that slight tangy to it. Yeah, so basically um, in China we call it a half ripe mango. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely a half ripe mango. And then you just you know, dress it or whatever with the dressing. In, in, in Illinois, we call it a half unripe mango, but but th that's just us. <laughs> in New York, we call for delivery. <laughs> uh, so in, in in Thailand, Maturo, is it a half ripe mango? Well, I, I know you get plenty of mangoes over there. Just wave, just wave. <laughs> okay. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah, that mangoes over in Thailand, right? Yeah, they have beautiful mangoes. Different uh different types of mangoes too. Okay. That looks real good, Cynthia. Ho hold it up to the um hold it up to the screen. Um yeah. Uh, bring it, bring it more, bring it more towards you. Bring it more towards you, right? Ooh, yeah. very, very nice, very nice. Let, let, George, take a capture. Let me capture that moment. Blue box, oh, 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 that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. Save the moment. Very nice. Yep. Larry, Got it. Uh, you have to blue Got box it. it. Everyone at home can see though, too. Yeah, I did. Uh, she was blue box. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the quinoa is almost ready. I can I can almost see it. You'll almost, and then all you do is fluff it, and it if you start it right about the same time you put the shrimp in, mm -hmm. they'll come out ready at the same time. Right. So that's kind of a a little cool tip there. And then I have all these funky do little um, things like that. I don't know what would you call that a timbale or something. And, Larry? No, um, it's, it's some sort of ramic. It's like a ramic, but it's yeah, yeah, it's a ramic. Yeah, but it's a yeah. it's a metal. Is that metal? It yeah. Looks, yeah, it's a metal ramic. Mm -hmm. What I'll do is I'll scoop it into the metal ramic mm -hmm. and then drop it on top for the for presentation. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just this big pile I, of. Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll give you a little tip. Put yeah. a little put a little water in the in the ramic just. Just put a little water in it. So, yeah. and when you when you stuff the um the quinoa into the ramekin, it will come out very easily, and it wouldn't be ah, okay. it wouldn't be I'll sticking wouldn't be sticking to the ramekin. Yeah, that's a that's a neat little trick. Okay, I like that. Just a little water, in, you know. We were talking around, about around the edges. quinoa last week, and I've been um, I've been hooked on couscous lately, and. I finally found the couscous that I really love, and it's um, it's uh, not Mediterranean. It is Israeli. Israeli. No, not not Israeli. No. Got to give me a minute to think of it. It's not bigger than Israeli couscous. It's about a quarter inch in diameter. It's almost the size of peas, and it's amazing. Not, not, is, is, you sure that's not Israeli or Moroccan? No, Moroccan no. is a little smaller. Yeah. No. Yeah, Moroccan's uh, really little. Yeah. I'll tell you in a second. Let me look it up. Maybe it's from Iowa. <laughs> I love couscous, and I've found um, a, a company that makes it, and then they have different flavors. So there's one with mm. pine nuts, and there's another one with garlic. And oh, so, that delicious. Doesn't it? Mm. You can also mix um, like golden raisins, like Soak some golden raisins and then add those to the couscous. You can do so much with couscous. Same with the same with the the quinoa. The exact same thing. Cool. And then, oh, it's Lebanese, Lebanese couscous. Lebanese, Lebanese uh -huh. couscous. Ah, okay. Ah, I'm and I implore that. you to to try it because the mouthfeel of these little round succulent just it's unbelievable. It's really good. That sounds really good. 
Yeah. And you say they're they're slightly bigger than the um, than the regular couscous, right? Yeah, oh, it's quite bigger than regular mm. couscous, and it's it's uh, moderately bigger than Israeli couscous. It's about they're about a quarter inch in diameter. Wow, that's pretty. A little big. bit smaller than than large peas. That, that's really like good. that's like marbles in your mouth. <laughs> oh, unbelievable! No. <laughs> it sounds really good, though. Yeah, yeah, it does sound good. And what do you use it to complement? I mean, what does it complement? Like, what are you making? La last time I made it, I just made it to eat it because I hadn't so, had it in so long, right? Okay. Um, but I like to put it as a um, uh, as, as, as a as a side stews okay. to go on top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. So I'll just spread it out over the plate and then set whatever I'm about to devour on top of it. Hey. I'm not as fancy as you, Cynthia. <laughs> That's okay. It's a Louisiana thing, I think. Okay, so it looked like, like the, the quinoa is done. Yeah, and it, what you do is you fluff it up. All right. And, and let the steam come out of it, and that butternut squash is all in there. Mm -hmm. So now it's kind of, it mix, self mixes itself, sort of. <laughs> yeah, so then it looks what good. I would do is let it do its thing, steam out, basically, and then put some in this thing, <coughs> pack and it down. All right, the, you, you, um, you, you put a little water, you, you know, just a little water on this, on the edges and... Yeah, I did that. Yeah. That's a cool yeah. idea. Yeah. And that and pomegranate video was great. I've always wondered how to do that. Yeah, that was a great uh, video that Jerry Stone uh, shared. Um, Folks, for those of you wondering what we're talking about, go to my page. Uh, there was a video that Jerry Stone from Cooking Stone shared, and I reshared it with the rest of the um, folks, uh, showing how to a quick way to peel pomegranates. <clears throat> nice trick, nice trick. I think I posted it yesterday, so uh, you could go and um, and check it. So basically, you let that do its thing, and then the, um, let's see here. I've got to get the shrimp out. The shrimp mm -hmm. should be done. Oh. Let me get a, a towel real fast. Take the, the other one, so. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing talking in the background there, Cynthia. You have guests over who will be yeah, tasting your food. <laughs> and then here's the the bread. Awesome. Ready? So then what I do? Ooh, hot. Is I take the nothing like Hangout Networks to make me hungry after mm -hmm. I already ate dinner. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Larry, I just got, I just got, I, I just got a message from Jason uh, Pete. She said, "Hi, George. Watching your Hangout on air with Larry and Cynthia Seymour. Yummy." Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's the. the All right. The key. Is how, right, that did is come it, out beautifully. You see how easy it it it, uh, it, yep. it, come, it came out? Right, lovely. Yeah, it released beautifully. And then I actually do not use a slotted spoon for the shrimp. I, I use a full spoon because I want to get all that sauce surrounding mm -hmm. the plate. So I surround the quinoa with the shrimp. Hmm. Does look great. And make sure that it's served with uh, mm -hmm. French bread. That looks really good. So once it's once it's uh, <coughs> smells even better. Once it's <laughs> once it's cooked, it's uh. You know, it's it's really, it's really quite nice. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> so y'all want to see? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Hold it up. Oh, wow. Hold awesome. it, awesome. Hold it right, right there, right there, right there. Let me capture that moment. Oh, I should have sliced some tomatoes for mine. I've got a few tomatoes left from my garden, so I should okay. have done that. That's you got awesome. it? That looks got so it. good. That got does it. look so good. Yeah. Wow. I, That's fabulous. Can I eat mine yet, please? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, George. <laughs> Let, I, yeah, I got it. Say. what you think. Like... Carol's all right, stupid. all right. We're 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 gonna we're gonna start eating mine because I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna take another plate for Sarah. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna feed Karen. See what she thinks of it. Okay. You can you can choose whether you want to do or not. That's fine. <laughs> Voila. See? Cynthia, we're going to do the finger looking uh, good thing that you yeah. said. Yeah. All right. No, 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 not a problem if I don't use the. Board, no, right? that's what this is for. All right, cool. But you can do your fingers. Am I allowed to talk with my mouth full, too? <laughs> so that's, it's, it's hot, so just. Mm, that's delicious, that sauce. Yeah, we'll forget that. I, and, and Cynthia. Who's the young lady that's uh, sampling your dish? Oh, young. This Thank you Karen so much. Diaz. <laughs> I was... Queen for life. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. How are you? <laughs> She's us... part of my extended family at this point. Let us know exactly how it's... It's hot. It's delicious. Mm. Cynthia, delicious. Cynthia, we're on G+. Plus. You shouldn't say extended family. You should say extended circles. Excuse me? <laughs> on G plus, George said on G plus you say extended circles. <laughs> uh, yes. She's one of my extended, very close extended circles. Right. So, Cynthia, this will feed about what? Um, two to three people or yeah, just one of me? Yeah. <laughs> Delicious. Do you like it? Oh, my God. I love the combination of the butternut and the spicy sauce and... Is it too spicy no, or is it's it delicious? It's okay. just fine. Because in the South, we have a tendency to spice things up a bit. It sounds like it would be savory spicy. It is. It's not like it's burning your mouth or anything. It's just right. Now, maybe Linda D could speak about the opposite on the unsavory stuff. <laughs> 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 Linda D, you've been very quiet tonight. Every, everything okay? Yes, George has been very good tonight. Okay. <laughs> Little moderation required, right? Yeah. We have you have to put a bridle on him and yeah, and hold him. <laughs> if anybody would like to see the real George, tune in for the pirate club. Now you know why we serve it on. <laughs> It is super messy, George. What do you think? Oh yeah, it's it's definitely messy, and I um, <laughs> mm. <laughs> I can't be I I can't be touching my mouse anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It doesn't. It doesn't work well with apples. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, that yeah. looks absolutely delicious, Cynthia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did a, wonder, did a wonderful job. Uh, thank you for coming. George, you look like you're enjoying yourself. Oh, it's, it's, it, it is so delicious. Don't, don't, don't talk with your mouth full. Jason, thanks for coming, buddy. Thanks for having me. What should uh, we cook next time? Any yeah, well, <laughs> what are we cooking next time? Well, you, you'll be the creative one. You could come I, up I, with something. Cynthia, I still want that crayfish. I got the crayfish in my freezer. To cook, so I'm, I'm, I'm All right, I'll get that. that figured out. I gotta get the. I gotta get the state of Louisiana to send me a a, tr a plane full. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm in desperate need of a really good rice pudding recipe. Okay. All right. I'll Use think about. Yeah. You uh, can, can we do bananas foster too? Yeah, that's a good <laughs> recipe. I love that type of stuff. Okay, cool. S Cynthia, what's what's the name of your blog again? My blog is flamingolips.com. Okay. And it, it's 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 kind of a range of topics. It's very Florida lifestyle. 
so there's cooking. There's a lot of cooking, especially now that I'm doing this. I have a tendency to put the recipes and pictures up there. And then uh, I also do things like fun things to do in Florida and events and health-related spa stuff, you know, things like that. Okay. Great okay. books. If I read a great book, I'll write something about it. Okay. Awesome. Good. Good. Awesome. All right. Uh, Linda, thank you for coming. Matura, thank you. Thank you. Folks, you can view everything on um, hangoutnetworks.com um, next week, or actually this Sunday on my regular show. It's uh, Learning How to Cook Caribbean with Larry Fenelier. And uh, on that show, we have Daniel Fontaine, and he'll be doing a, a, a vegan burger and some other and some other interesting things he'll be cooking from his kitchen. Oh, awesome. It, yeah, he's up in Connecticut, I think. So, with that said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Great show. Great show. Great show. Great show. show, yeah. show, show yeah. yeah, so. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks out there in the um in the events page watching. Thank you. See you guys on Sunday.